Um, so tell me, how would you describe yourself or your career? How would you put it into words? No. Shortly. <laughs> yeah, you want a short version. Okay, uh, I started making films when I was 12, or some years ago. And as amateur filmmaker, then I wrote a film critic, then I started Academy, then I started making professional films, uh, professional television, um, started uh, to teach at the film school, then in the 90s I, I founded a film production company, Factum, which is documentary film production, and after that uh, 18 years ago, I started uh, uh, Zagreb Docs, which is a film festival. This is the shortest version Perfect. possible. <laughs> so tell me, you're such a you have a prolific career, uh, and like you said, you started your production house back then. What are some challenges and rewards from encouraging film production in Croatia? We started uh, 25 years ago, and at that time we were the only documentary independent production, which meant that we had, uh, in I would say, uh, a kind of call to be something other productions didn't do, which means that at the time, in the 90s, uh, most of the production was uh, governmental controlled. And there were a number of subjects that were out of limits, there were even some of them censored. So we uh, took as a part of our portfolio to make films about controversial issues like uh, war crimes and uh, stuff like this. Um, issues uh, nobody else didn't dare to touch. And uh, as I said, this is only a part of what we did. We did 80 plus films in these 25 years. But that's how we started. Uh, uh, to be fair, it was in the very beginning, the production was co-financed, not completely, but co-financed by Soros uh, in Croatia. Uh, that was the only way, uh, because all other governmental sources were not, they closed the doors for us. But also, a lot of people couldn't work. Uh, people who didn't at that time agree with uh, official politics didn't. And in film, you know, film is uh, expensive. And if you don't have a kind of, especially in small countries, if you don't have governmental support, then you don't work. So uh, we uh, said to uh, our colleagues, especially the young people, we said, okay, you are not going to get a lot of money, but you will have all the time and freedom you need. And so we started with a number of young uh, uh, filmmakers who did their first, second films uh, in, in Khartoum. And now they are recognized filmmakers like Matanić, for example, and other, other uh, quite famous uh, film directors now in the middle, uh, middle uh, of their careers. And uh, we were very happy with that. But also we did a number of other films we made. We were in a, in a way pioneers of autobiographical uh, documentaries, which were not really, practically not done. I, um, we, we are quite, uh, we are very loud, but we are very shy here, <laughs> in a way. We don't talk about ourselves. It's not, it, it, it's, uh, you know, it's said that it's not nice to, you know, to expose your life or your problems or whatever. And when they did the first, film for Factum myself because I was trying to find out what is possible and it was an autobiographical semi-autobiographical film about myself and an English guy who burned himself alive in the front of the British Parliament because of the war in Bosnia so I was, we were the same generation so I was doing this parallel uh, 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 film and one of the critics said that I was a war profiteer. Uh, so uh, people were not prepared for that kind of, you know, traditionally documentary in Croatia and in the whole of the region was, you know, you have a truck and you have a lot of gear, you have your crew, you kiss your wife for, you know, two months and you go somewhere in the mountains or somewhere and, you know, she doesn't hear from you because you are filming. 
to make a film uh, in your home or next door was not the way, that's not documentary. So uh, we changed this also, uh, making a small, intimate, uh, uh, autobiographical films, films about little issues. And the third string was to make films about uh, people on the verge of the society, mm -hmm. poor people, gay people, and so on and so on. And we made, I think, the first film about the prostitute here. So this kind of, you know, tackling the issues uh, other didn't uh, do and um, I couldn't say we had the support from the film community that was for at least 15 years of this 25 there was kind of silence we were not approved no disapproved you know there was we were kind of a limbo yeah not, not uh, pretending we did not exist uh, because we were troublemakers, and who wants troublemakers in the film world, you know, it's tough. But then I, I said, okay, we will limit ourselves to the documentaries, uh, it's low budget, nobody will have the feeling that we are getting their money, and so that was it. Now, of course, it has changed a lot in this last 10, 15 years, we are just a part of the film community, we make uh, new films, we are trying to be as controversial as possible and we succeed in that still. And I have to say that uh, in all these 25 years, which is very interesting, we never ever had a single co-production with Croatian television. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? No, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say to somebody in Europe that we don't, you don't work with your national television, then there are only two answers. Either you are lousy, you, you are so bad, they don't want to deal with you, or you are crazy. <laughs> because, you know, uh, why are you not to, um, to choose and then I have to say, come on, we try to do it, we offered projects, we offered this. Never ever was anything commissioned or co-produced or produced by Croatian television, which is public television. So in 25 years, in 80 films, you would assume that at least something. No. So that's, in short, the situation with Factum. We are now making six films and we are preparing just preparing one television series, we did not do it, of course, alone. But there was a competition at our National Film Center for developing. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, again, a lot, number of these issues are controversial and uh, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, because we still have the problem with our recent history and we are trying to uh, address it. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, it's interesting that we never ever had a single lawsuit against us in 25 years. So obviously we do our research well. You're doing something right. Yeah. Uh, what we, you said that Factum uh, started off with making these controversial subjects. What about today? What are the controversial subjects? Or maybe that you're dealing yeah. with today? Okay, uh, we are now... I'll just tell you the series we are now developing, which is a series about the, the most prominent uh, court cases uh, in the last 20 years, which were or um, we, which all went through a law office, a, a, a lawyer office of two very important uh, Croatian lawyers, Jada Prodanovic and, and his partner. And uh, interesting is that all the big, big fish, like uh, former prime prime minister or the the the, uh, the mayor of the, of Zagreb, and you know Mr. Tudor Tudorovic, and you know the the Agrocor, the, all this uh, stuff. All the big players. All the big players w w went through this office. So we are developing a story about this office trying to paint a picture of transition in Croatia through mm -hmm. this. At the same time we are developing now, we got some small developing money um, uh, uh, 
documentary, a feature length documentary about Reichel Kier, who was the first, he was a police officer who uh, wanted to work with Serbs uh, in Slavonia and was killed because of that. So that's another issue which is not very popular. So we are trying to uh, be um, to, to, to stick to our reputation. But on the other hand, we are also doing some very uh, either poetic or very personal. We are also um, now developing a, a film by a very, very talented young filmmaker who was my student but who was quite severe drug, a drug addict. And now he's recovering and we are trying to make film together uh, about his life. And we'll probably do it on Super 8 to have this kind of very, very personal uh, approach. So yeah, as I said, six films in development, uh, one TV series. And, and the TV series, is that also a documentary TV series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We only do documentaries. We don't want to go because we don't want to be... Uh, to, any, uh, to, to, to step on, uh, on, the, on foot of big apps. Uh, so they do fiction and, and fiction series and this is where money is. And we do, you know, when I say to somebody that I think from 83 films, I think we only made four with a budget of more than 50,000 euros. Then you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's all clear. Um, so you mentioned uh, Zagreb Docs, which is one of the biggest documentary festivals in Croatia. We praise ourselves that uh, that's true, but we never know. <laughs> we never know. But tell me, uh, what is the place of documentary filmmaking in, in Croatia? Is, there a, is the audience um, literate in documentaries? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to be very honest, uh, very, very uh, shy about it. Uh, the fact is that when we started 18 years ago, Documentaries, people knew, uh, the audience knew were, you know, National Geographic, History Channel, this kind of television documentaries. They didn't know about authors or personal uh, documentary, creative documentaries. There was no notion about it in Croatia. So we started doing and showing this. We started, uh, we opened the first film with Herzog mm -hmm. uh, and we moved on from then. And it was um, uh, the first high definition screening of documentary in Croatia in the big cinema. Everybody came, it was fun. But uh, we, are, we are persistently showing very personal, very intimate, very controversial, uh, creative documentaries. Um, I don't have anything against, you know, the industry shaped or made uh, films or series like Documentary Channel or History Channel or whomever, HBO or whatever. But that's a different, in, that's in the industry, you know, you don't, you never know who made it. You don't know who was the director. Or why they made it. Yeah. Well, why they made it to make money, of course. That's very, very simple. You know, you have uh, 25 series about shark, shark attacks. You have uh, 18 uh, documentaries about, you know, Mount Everest, 25 about temples in Nepal, you know, this kind of stuff, you know. Fair enough. That's not what we are doing, and that's not what we are showing. So when we started Zagreb Dogs, we said, okay, we'll fight the doc for documentaries the same way we do it in production, but in a different way. So to to uh, to um, show personal creative creative uh, documentaries, and now we created the audience. I have to say we created the audience, and that's what for us is important. We have people who are being following up us uh, for years. On the other hand, we are trying also to develop uh, new audiences. This year we had um, a small program about TikTok. Uh, some years ago we had interactive documentaries, 3D documentaries, virtual reality documentaries.
documentary. So we are trying to see what's going on, you know. Uh, and um, that's interesting because documentaries, because it's less money, uh, people are more daring, people are more experimenting. You know, when you have hundreds of millions in budgets, you are not in experiment. You know, in documentaries, you do it for 50, 60, 100,000 euros, okay, you can do whatever you want. Sounds well, romantic. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. You know, you have a lot of people who do documentaries just by themselves. As, as I call them with love, uh, they're kitchen producers. You know, the production house is in their kitchen. <laughs> and I love it. You know, they go somewhere. And also, you know, to make a documentary, usually it takes two, three, five years. Fiction. Uh, you have to make in 30 or 40 days or 25 days because of the budget, the big crew, and so on and so on. Here, you have yourself, maybe two other crew members, and then you go and uh, you travel, or you travel in your home, and then you record your family for 10 years, 20 years, and then you make a film. So it's, it's much more relaxing, uh, less pressure, and I love it. Perfect. Uh, so let's focus a little bit on Motto and where we are. Okay. Um, so um, it's a little different from what you do here. The genre is fiction, um, and there's both feature lengths and shorts. Uh, what do you think are the benefits of Motto and Film Festival? I think Motto, in a way, is mother or father, whatever gender you like, uh, of film festivals in in Croatia, and that's very important because people who who started Motun later, some of them went and started other festivals like Zagreb Film Festival and some other festivals, very important festivals. And also Motun has a unique, not only uh, environment, but also a kind of splendid isolation. You know, you are here and you cannot do anything else just for films, you know, in Zagreb. You have a festival, you go, you either work and then come to the festival or you study or you don't do anything and then you see two films and you have you go to a party or whatever or you go to a regular cinema. Here, this is what's really precious and what's unique. That's what I think is something that is going to stay with the water, water one uh, for years to come because that's how it is. On the other hand, I think that motto on the same as we all, uh, and I was quite intrigued by what we just heard uh, from the Swedish delegation. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have to recognize the fact that a film, or let's maybe call it audiovisual storytelling, has changed a lot in the last couple of years. It's not the way it was. It's not. You know, uh, film institute, uh, 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 festivals, awards, and cinemas. That's not the case anymore. Not only because of the streaming, not only because of the of the uh, pandemic, but mostly because new generations are coming. You know, the TikTok generation is coming. They cannot. They don't have concentration to watch a two-hour film. Uh, the Marvel generation or the you know the the uh, video game generation so they're coming uh, there's nothing about you can do about it and how to combine their interests with the kind of uh, linear traditional storytelling my and many many younger generations I used to this is a big challenge for the production, for the distribution, but also for the festivals. Because we cannot pretend, you know, to these kids, Canon, Venice, they don't care about it. Probably they don't even know about it. So in 20 years, come on. And we have to start thinking about it. When I think of festivals, I think Zagreb Dogs, uh, Motorwoon, uh, Can, Venice, whomever. We have to start thinking about this generation. I have two grandsons, so I know very well what's going on, you know. Uh, they don't care about this huge film quality because most of them are watching films on mobile phones. 
So you invest millions of dollars in splendid, you know, this and Dolby sound and 3D and 4D and whatever, and then they watch it on, on mobile phones. Not all of them, not all of the movies. But how to cope with that? How to embrace this new world um, uh, in our festivals? For me, that's the real challenge. We all have to find an an answers. And of course, different festivals will find different answers. I don't think anybody, not Croatia, anywhere, has the answer. We all, like we had this, you know, uh, um, the TikTok section next year we will have something that will, will be called offline online but you know the, the, the notion of, of linear storytelling with the beginning middle and the end is also a challenge kids are used to video games and that's non-linear yeah. so again I'm not advocating anything <laughs> you know I you know I'm so happy that Persona is shown here because that's one of my ten favorite films. I love the opening film this year. Uh, I, I think it's a masterpiece. So I'm of course uh, uh, in love with traditional film, but you know, uh, being in documentary, you have to recognize the reality, and reality is at least from what I know, from what I see. And it's not just, you know, the bastards from Netflix and the pandemic. It's taking over the power, the audience taking over the power of, part of the power of creating the, what, what the broadcasters are calling, uh, naming content. Now, what are we going to do with that? I don't know. But let's think about it before it's too late, you know? Come on, the first interactive film was made in Czechoslovakia in the 60s. And it wasn't a success. But, you know, it has been 60 years from now. So, technology change more than anything else. People change. New generations are coming. And I think we have challenges in front of us, all of us. From what you're saying, I'm wondering, is it so important to... It's important to give people the platform to have what they want, but there, I, because I'm also of a bit older generation... Um, we are all. We all are. If, you, if, you, if we are more than 15, we are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm wondering, there is such value in something that you might not want like in the traditional movies how do we how do we balance look uh, at the film school in Zagreb there is a uh, a internet group of uh, right of uh, uh, students of writing and it's called sarcastically Bergman <laughs> this black and white boring films and there's the film school they believe we don't know about it <laughs> They believe we don't know. Well, of course we do. So, uh, I think number one, what festivals should be, is this a platform for, for discussion. That's not replaceable by anything. No Zoom, nothing. Live, person-to-person -person interaction. And I think, and of course, I am not supposed to say this, but I think, this is more the, the fact that we are discussing what about what's on the screen is more important than what's on the screen. Absolutely. Because, be, come on, there are hundreds of films. I can make my festival, you can make your festival, you know, you can make thousands of festivals, so more or less they are going to be okay. Now, what is important is to bring the audience, to attract the audience and to talk to them. Because there is nothing, you know, I always, uh, uh, I'm always trying to listen to the people when they are going out of the cinema. Mm -hmm. What they discuss, because you know, in documentaries they usually discuss topic, they don't discuss, you know, the costumes, the actors, the money, the directors, the, no. They are discussing the topics. And that's what we have been doing from the beginning, 
uh, we have this special uh, programs from teenagers for teenagers where we discuss in depth all the films and they are discussing with the filmmakers giving the awards blah blah but much more than this the human contact I think that's the if there is any recipe for uh, festivals in the future this human contact in my book maybe I'm I'm sure old-fashioned, but that's the way I, I see it. I agree it. with you, but I think I'm a little old-fashioned too. Okay, not to keep you too long. Okay. One last question, uh, which is also quite personal to yeah. me and I'm sure to you. Um, how would you describe the state of Croatian film and where next with Croatian film? Yeah, uh, you know, mm, Croatian film is in the bubble. This bubble has its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, what I don't like is this kind of European pudding we are all trying to do these days. You know, you have to go to the, especially in documentary, but also in fiction, you have to go to at least three pitching sessions, you have to uh, defend your film, then you have to go to the uh, script doctors as if you are sick, then you have to go to the different producers, different broadcasters and they one says I need 50 minutes version I'll say I want that so the whole process is so long and boring and expensive you know I'm nostalgic I'm not I know I'm going to be judged for that but I'm nostalgic for the time when I was going to uh, the, the commission editor in the public television in Zagreb I would knock on the door, I would go in, he would smoke a cigar and all the chairs were full of papers, I would move the papers, sit in one of the chairs, they would say, what do you have? I would pitch five minutes, he would say, okay, uh, I like it, just write me half a page, just so I have something, in two weeks you have your crew, you can go film, for documentary especially. Now you wait three years for a documentary. I know many documentaries. I'm not, of course, not even under torture. I'm not going to name them. But I know so many documentaries which are fake because they had to wait three years to get this financing or that financing or this financing. And I think that if there is anything, I wouldn't say wrong, but anything I personally don't like uh, in today's Croatian cinema and, and industry, which is not industry, come on, it's not even manufacturer, uh, is that fact that you have to go and in that way, instead they, they say, okay, here is the money, tomorrow you can start filming, uh, if you can uh, add to this money, great, but here is the minimum you need to make the film. Uh, this is not working anymore and I'm, I'm sad about it because some films benefit from waiting, but not all of them, you know, not even the fiction. Yeah. You, you had maybe this young uh, lady from Sweden said that he had to rewrite, that she had to rewrite and rewrite and she didn't like it, of course, because after some time you are tired and you just want to go and film. So um, this, this European pudding, uh, judged by not always competent people, not always experienced people. Or enthusiastic not, people. Not all, always enthusiastic people. It's not something I like. I'm a part of it, I know. My festival is part of it because it has to be because of the filmmakers. But frankly, I hate it. If you ask me privately, I hate it. Officially, it's great. <laughs> um, shall we leave it maybe on a positive note? Maybe a good creation film or something you would recommend in recent years? Yeah, uh, I would recommend... Um, let me see... Blah, 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 blah. I would recommend... Uh, this my production, I cannot... Okay, uh, of course that, you can. You know, <laughs> Uh, I would recommend Anna Bodhisattva's film. Yeah, I would really recommend it. I think it's a very interesting, creative film about a very important topic. Uh, I, I like the way the fiction and documentary is combined. 
uh, I like I like the energy she put into it. So that's one of the things I would surely recommend. Brilliant! Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you. To me. <laughs>